Hey everybody, welcome to another Catfish Chalk Talk. We've done a few of these now. I really hope you're enjoying what you're seeing. I'm hoping you're getting some usefulness out of it and learning to catch catfish a little better or just at least give you something to think about. Um, it's what I do, think about catfish, so to speak. Uh, a few things I'd like to announce. Uh, hot off the presses. Well, not so hot off the presses anymore, but I figure I'll announce it now that all the scheduling is together. There is a Catfish University returning to Iowa for the first time since 2014 in the expanded format. We are going to cover topics for eight straight hours. We're going to talk about channel cats in rivers, channel cats in lakes, flatheads. We're going to talk about ice fishing catfish. We're going to talk about catching catfish from kayaks. We're going to talk about electronics. We're even going to have all of our guest speakers at a round table at the end. It's going to be a great, great event. Uh, if you're in the Iowa area or can make it to Des Moines, we would love to have you. The date is March 17th. For more information, uh, catfishuniversity.com. Click on the Des Moines Catfish University. Moving on, we're going to step away from the lesson, so to speak, and we're going to hit something that I see a lot of and I really think a lot about and it's very important to me this is gonna be a a long-winded lesson so sit back and enjoy yourself because I feel this is a very important thing to get across as we move into 2018 again a lot of this all of this information is coming from my books cracking the channel catfish code and advanced channel catfishing made easy or advanced catfishing made easy I guess it's more general than that but I want to read you a, pay, uh, a section of catfish code that goes back to 2012 when I wrote this to release in 2013 and it's about catfish conservation and a lot of this stuff is coming true and we are getting better but we got a lot of work to do and there's a few things that are kind of bugging me about it and there's some new information arising through research and I just wanted to talk about this for a minute so I'm just gonna read you a couple paragraphs quick in chapter two I touched on the topic of the new generation of trophy catfish anglers and how members of this group target trophy fish for a challenge and sport. Through education and experience, they're all very good at what they do. This means that conservation of trophy catfish is more important than ever. Now keep in mind, this is going on five years since I've written this, and it's more important every day as we progress forward. Catfish anglers must be sure to return their trophy fish back into the rivers and lakes so they will continue to live and be breeding stock for the next generation of anglers. Some states have already taken catfish conservation very seriously, while others are still not willing to do so and prevent the pre preemptive measures to protect these trophy catfish. Many states still allow commercial harvest of, channel of catfish. Larger fish are taken from wild rivers and sold to privately owned lakes where the general pays a fee to catch these trophies in the enclosed environment. Many anglers would see this as no different than hunting deer in a fenced-in area. So much for the concept of fair chase. Sportsmen and trophy hunters are in an uphill battle in these states because commercial industry continues to grow and angler numbers continue to grow. This is a lose-lose situation and it needs to be addressed by both sides and the state natural resource agencies to find common ground of these practices. Until that happens, it remains very important for anglers to practice good catch photo and release a trophy catfish and do their best to keep their rivers healthy and for exciting catfish opportunities. Again, I wrote that in 2012 and there's a lot of things been happening and social media I think is fanning the flames. But I want to talk about a couple of other things on a personal note. I just completed my 10th year of guiding and one of the things that I'm very proud of is the whole selective harvest thing. Uh, ten years running, I couldn't even tell you how many tons total off the top of my head, but we put in a steadfast rule that all catfish over 24 inches must be immediately released back to the water. And that is not the law. The law up here in the Red River actually states they can keep one over 24 inches per person. But my boat my rules and I'm proud to say just going back a couple years I caught just a hair over 10, 10 tons in 2017 which was about 2,000 fish and 
92 of those fish channel cats, mind you, were 20 pounds and bigger. And every one of those went back to the water. In fact, basically a 24-inch channel cat is 4.5 to 5.5 pounds. Anything bigger than that, over 1,000 in 2017 were released back into the Red River for someone else to enjoy. Go back to 2016, which is a real big fish year. We had over 120 pounders released. I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of keeping this alive. Now, going into some other issues, up here on the Red River, we have slot limits. We have very strict regulations with our trophy fishery, which is one of the big reasons we are a trophy fishery. And I try to stay out of it because it doesn't necessarily pertain to me, but I'm going to say it here. When you get into states like Kentucky, Ohio, and I'm sure there's more where the whole commercial netting, taking these 50, 60, 70, 100 pound blue cats, flatheads, whatever they might be, and putting them in these pay lakes, that's doing nothing but hurting generations of potential opportunity for other anglers. And as this game gets bigger and the anglers are getting better, that's just hurting everybody. Uh, I tend to not talk about this very much because, frankly, it's not an issue up here and you have to pick your battles. I have my own battles to fight up here in North Dakota. I'm just thankful that's not one of them. But I know people from other parts of the United States are watching this, and selective harvest is a key. I'm not saying release everything. Keep a few smaller ones for a meal. Enjoy your fish and, and let the big ones go for someone else to enjoy. Let them be the trophy breeding stock. And that's where I stand. And I've always said, if you've seen videos of me or TV shows of me or even interviews of me, we are very lucky up here on the Red River to have the strict regulations and the fine, fine food sources and growing of the catfish. But we also know that it takes many, many years to get these trophy channel cats. We are not, in the end the number one channel cat fishery in the United States for no reason at all. It's because we have strict regulations. Locals do not like to eat catfish up here in walleye world. And we have good food sources, good flooding when we need it, good quality water. We have the best of everything. But that selective harvest has played into it. I want to touch on another thing before I go that came up here in the November in Fisherman Magazine. Um, I happened to be paging through it one day and I saw a picture of myself actually holding a catfish. I'm like, wait a minute. Recipe for trophy channel cats. I never gave anybody at In Fisherman a recipe for catfish. Heaven forbid a recipe for trophy ones. But it went on and it talked about different studies that have gone on and it specifically touched on the University of Nebraska study with Manitoba fisheries on the Canadian side of the red where they're tagging many thousands of catfish. Last I heard it was upwards of 15,000 catfish. And I've been very fortunate to be part of this project over the last three or four years and be very involved in it thanks to Good Migrations Healthy Fish and being able to catch a lot of the tagged fish and get to know the researchers. But one of the things that this study is teaching us is that by re having the strict regulations on trophy fish and the anglers taking it upon themselves to release the trophy fish back to be caught again and again and again, that we can manage trophy channel cat and, well, we can channel fisheries. I always say channel cats because that's what I do. But we can manage for trophy cat fisheries. We just have to get the proper regulations. Again, not saying you can't keep anything, but make sure those big breeders go. Those fish that take a generation. These 20-pound channel cats we catch are estimated to be between 20 and 30 years old. Well, I'm in my early 40s, so I was 10 years old when these fish were born. You can't just dramatically pull those big numbers of those old fish out of a system and just magically expect them to come back the next year. You don't get a fresh crop of big, big fish every year. And that's what the gist of this short article is showing. And this research project, when it is done, I think is really going to tell a great story for all of us on the conservation front. So I just wanted to touch on that. It's very near, near and dear to my heart. It is to a lot of other people's hearts. Again, I'm very proud of what we have up here. I'm very proud that I can say we let all of our fish go so someone else can enjoy it. Because frankly, I'm not in the business 
of filling coolers of fish. I'm in the business of getting people the fish of a lifetime and getting that photograph that they get to take home and remember forever. This was probably the longest <clears throat> catfish chalk talk you're going to hear this year, but I wanted to get this off my chest. Uh, I, you folks working on conservation in the other states, you have my support. Uh, again, thanks for watching. We're going to get back to the lessons with the next one. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, look me up on Facebook. Give me an email. Answer your questions. Uh, let me know what you think because this is uh, getting into some pretty exciting stuff. I'm really, really getting excited about going through step by step. So once again, thank you so much.